This brings us to paternalism and anti-paternalism. I mean, South Park is, and I think you, you probably get this. You know what paternalism is? It's a, it's a basically governments infringing on our individual sovereignty or in ability uh, to make uh, individual choices. And this is like, you know, a major element of a medicinal fried chicken is should the government be able to regulate what we, what we put in, into our bodies? Uh, paternalistic, you know, um, you know, these, these are often governed by um, uh, these, you know, rules and laws that are set forth are often, and in, in most cases, um, there's an agenda being pushed. <laughs> you know, you look at, you know, tobacco, you look at, you know, certain drugs that are pushed, you know, etc. Um, there's always an agenda there. Okay. And, um, you know, that's one of the things is like authorities in the government, you know, are always, you know, pushing someone's agenda, usually a corporate agenda, but it impacts our lives. And that's where Matt and Trey have a serious problem. So if you want to think of what a paternalistic society is, it's one where there's government has total control. So a communist society, so like someone like China or Russia, you know, where the government controls the media, the internet, um, you know, etc. you know, things like that. Um, they control the movies, you know, like, and, and, and so those are like very paternalistic societies. Obviously the United States, despite how you may feel is not a paternalistic society. You know, it's, you know, authoritarian societies are paternalistic. Um, but you know, South Park as a show, and I think you've seen this is pro individual. It's pro it's pro-choice, and they lampoon whoever they need to on the left or the right to advocate for the freedom of people to make their own choices, whether those choices are good or those choices are bad for them. It doesn't really matter. It's their right to make that choice. So basically, you know, the question becomes is, does a government and does government force, does it curb addiction? Now look at all of the things that the federal government has made illegal. Let's just say things we put into our bodies, certain drugs, you know. And throughout history, does that curb addiction to those drugs? And the answer is fuck no. People are going to figure out what they want when they you know, figure out how to get what they want. When when booze was prohibited, you had speakeasies, you had people running moonshine. I mean, you just you just had you know, people figure out to get what they want. You make certain things like cocaine or, or cannabis illegal and you figure out how to get it into the United States, you know. So um, the basic concept, though, you know, but for people who have a true libertarian philosophy are going to look at, at things like this, you know, um, body regulation, and they're going to suggest that, you know, decriminalization legalization is going to get rid of black markets it's going to reduce death it's going to curb violence um so i mean think and it's going to make things healthier so if you think of something like tobacco right it's totally decriminalized there's no black market for it i mean again we see this at the end of medicinal fried chicken that the black market creates violence right it creates problems right for society um, but when KFC is legal, there's no there's no issues like that. So um, you know, think of something like tobacco. You know, like it's it's regulated. We know it's bad for us. There's studies that tell us it's bad for us. The government taxes it heavily. Um, they make it hard to get for people of certain ages. Okay, we know it's bad for us. We know it kills us. But we make the choice if we're going to consume it or not. You know. Um, and for a libertarian, you know, you can't make, like, tobacco. You can't make people not smoke tobacco. You can just present them with the data. Like, this causes lung cancer and emphysema, and you will certainly die much younger if, than if you did not consume this. And, yes, you will become addicted. And, yes, you will spend a lot of fucking money to feed your addiction. Um, and then let them make the decision. That's what a libertarian would advocate for, is you make that decision there, okay? You get to use the information, you get to use your own personal judgment and reason, 
Okay, and you get to be an agent of your own liberty. Okay. And South Park presents this, you know, in so many ways where people are sniffing um, cat piss. <laughs> they become addicted to it and they try to regulate it. And one of the most paternal you know, episodes that's anti-paternalistic is the Rob Reiner, um, where he's trying to end uh, tobacco and, and smoking. And he's presented as grotesque, um, you know, and, you know, he tries to force people to stop smoking. And by doing that, you know, he becomes authoritarian um, and he doesn't actually, you know, it's not actually successful. There's not an actual success by forcing people or trying to force people to stop. I mean, look at like for tobacco, you look at the truth ads, right? Well, the tobacco companies have to put those out to say, hey, this will kill you. You will die. And you get to, as a human being, a citizen with the right of liberty and choice, make the decision to consume those products or not. Okay, so you see this in so many ways. South Park does not, it advocates for the individual over society. It advocates for the individual over government. Our freedoms, our personal liberties. This may be wrong. You may not agree like that. You may think um, that choices should be made that, you know, um, that do consider the whole, that do consider more than just the individual. Okay. Anyways, that kind of brings us to the end here. It's bittersweet. Um, I've enjoyed hanging out here on the farm by myself. Um, and mostly in my barn talking to a camera. Um, I really, you know, miss y'all. I wish I wish y'all were around. It makes this class so much more fun. The engagement, the talking, you know. Um, and I learned so much from students. I feel like I've been stripped of that. You know, I mean, I get, you know, that's pretty selfish um but you know i do i do really love that part of this class as i do end up learning um, so much from y'all and it's just so vital to i think my happiness in this class but i do hope you've you know you've learned a few things you maybe developed a new appreciation for south park or maybe you like it less um either way i think that's good i think that is um a solid you know, takeaway. Um, I hope that you, you know, at least thought more about the episodes, maybe more about the world, more about other things, and maybe learned a few things about this fucked up world we live in. Um, you know, and how comedy can, can an example of a way in which comedy can, um, you know, tackle some of those issues and, and, and make important things and important topics, um, you know, have value and meaning in, in a different way and in a fun way that makes us laugh a little bit about poop and puke and piss, you know. But, um, yeah, it's an interesting, interesting show. Be interesting to see how they handle all of the uh, COVID-19 stuff uh, next year. It's clearly going to be a major, major part of uh, the episodes um, next year. I can just imagine. I'm excited for it. But um, anyways, I just want to wish you the best of luck. Hope you're in good health mentally, physically. Um, and just want to wish you, yeah, a great break or a great life. And uh, yeah, we'll catch you on the flip. This is uh, The Real Dr. Dre coming to you directly from Goat's Beard Homestead Integrity. Um, I'm going to, you know, do what I should be doing in this hammock and uh, I'll catch y'all later.